In today's video, we'll learn all about the tangent wave. Here's a sine wave and cosine wave plot shown side by side. And if you've seen our sine and cosine wave videos, you would understand exactly why they're shaped this way. Here's a tangent wave plot. Notice it's a completely different shape compared to a sine or cosine wave. So why does it look this way? Well, in today's video, you'll learn all about it and why it's shaped this way. Stay tuned. In every math textbook, you'll see this definition of a tangent wave. A tangent wave is just a sine wave divided by a cosine wave. Well, I can just show you this equation and say thanks for watching and we'll be done with this video. But you really won't understand the concept. So let's try to dig in further. To understand a tangent wave, there's only one concept you really need to understand and that is slope. Let me explain. Let's say you're driving on a road which is in a hilly area and has ups and downs. As you drive, the chances of the road being completely flat or leveled through your entire trip is rare and not going to be the case. Instead, the road is going to have ups and downs like shown here. You'll have some part of the road that is pretty much flat. Some parts may be uphill and some may be downhill. So for a realistic road, you'll have a random combination of these three cases. To describe these ups and downs mathematically, you can use the concept of slope. Slope of the flat region, slope of the uphill region, and slope of the downhill region. So let's work that out. To do that, the first thing to do is draw a vertical and horizontal axis as shown in blue. Now let's consider only the flat region. Let's pick a section of this road as shown by the dotted line. Now we look at the change in the vertical axis of this region and then divide that by the change in the horizontal for that region. So there you have it. The slope is just the ratio of the change in the vertical to the change in the horizontal for that region which is flat in this case. So let's suppose the region between the dotted lines is 2 meters and it's shown in red. The change in the vertical for this is 0 or no change because you're just leveled for those 2 meters. However, the change in the horizontal is 2 meters as your car moves through that region. Now it's just a matter of dividing the two to get the slope. So 0 divided by 2, which is just 0. So there you have it. The slope for a flat region is always 0. Now let's look at the uphill region. With the same logic, let's pick a region shown and look at the change in the vertical and divide it by the change in the horizontal. Again, calculate the slope. The vertical change here is positive 0.2 meters and the horizontal change is positive 2 meters. So the slope is just 0.2 divided by 2, which is 0.1. So an uphill slope is greater than 0 and always a positive number. And finally, if you look at the downhill road, pick a region, the vertical change is now in this direction or the vertical change is now negative. So let's just plug in the numbers. Slope is now negative 0.4 divided by 2 and that is negative 0.2. So a downhill slope is always less than 0 or negative. To summarize, a flat or horizontal line slope is always 0. An uphill slope is always positive greater than 0. And finally, a downhill slope is always negative or less than zero. Now that you understand slope, let's go back to our giant wheel. Here it is, and it takes 20 minutes to complete one rotation. And let's suppose it's 100 meters in diameter. Now before it starts, what if I ask you, what's the slope of the black line? You've just learned that the flat or horizontal line slope is always zero. There's the answer. Now as the giant wheel rotates, let's say I stop it at a random position in its rotation 
And can you calculate the slope now? Well, again, we just look at the line and look at the ratio of the change in the vertical to the change in horizontal. As the giant wheel in total was 100 meters high, the change in vertical is positive and I measured it as 43 meters, which is shown in red. The change in the horizontal is 25 meters, which is shown in green. We take the ratio to calculate slope. It comes out to 1.72. See, the 1.72 is not important, but realize it's positive or greater than zero. Now let's continue and find the slope of this region. And we look at the change in the vertical and horizontal. Well, the vertical change is 50 meters, but the horizontal change is zero meters or no change. Now, if we calculate the slope, it's 50 meters divided by zero, which turns out to be infinity or a very, very, very large positive number, which mathematicians write as infinite or sometimes undefined. So the slope of a vertical line is always infinite and sometimes even called undefined. So now we can simply calculate slope of different instances as the giant wheel rotates, which takes 20 minutes for one rotation. So here are already calculated slopes for one complete rotation of the giant wheel. At zero minutes or when it starts, the slope is zero. After 2.5 minutes, the slope is one. At five minutes, the slope is infinite or undefined. At 7.5 minutes, the slope is negative one. At 10 minutes, the slope is back to zero. At 12.5, the slope is one. 15 minutes, the slope is infinite or not defined again. At 17.5 minutes, it's negative one. And after 20 minutes or one rotation, it's back to zero. Now let's plot these slopes on a slope versus time plot. At zero minutes, 2.5, 5, 7.5, 10 minutes, 12.5, 15, 17.5 and back to 20. Here you go. This is a tangent wave. So a tangent wave is simply slopes plotted with time as the wheel rotates. But in this plot, I only took nine data points to explain the concept to you. So the plot doesn't look complete. If I plot slopes continuously as the wheel rotates, this is what you get, a tangent wave. So again, the tangent wave plot is actually the slope varying as the wheel rotates. Realize that the tangent plot is not continuous in this dotted rectangular region. That's the most weird part about this wave. That is because it's actually not showing the motion of the wheel as we saw in a sine or cosine wave videos. It's actually showing the ratio of the vertical to horizontal. So when the giant wheel reaches this green line, the slope is already near positive infinity shown by the green square. Then for the blue line, it's near negative infinity. So all of a sudden it's showing a jump on the plot and that continues to the green square and then to the blue again. So this red dotted rectangular region is where the discontinuity or jumping around comes from. And this repeats over and over as the giant wheel rotates for the first oscillation, second oscillation, and third oscillation, and so on. Another thing, looking at the giant wheel again, you were always taught a line that touches the circumference is a tangent. And the horizontal line I drew is actually parallel to the tangent. So their slope plot would exactly be the same. Let's take a look. Here's the tangent. Let's take a look. This is why this wave is called a tangent wave. But I wish it was called the slope of the tangent because that's what it actually is conceptually. Then it would make a lot more sense. Going back to the equation for tangent wave you always memorized, I told you the slope is actually changing the vertical divided by the change in the horizontal. Now, if you remember my sine and cosine wave videos, the sine wave is actually showing you the vertical change and the cosine is showing you the horizontal change. So if you divide them, you just end up with the tangent wave. And if you want to see this in action, a sine wave divided by a cosine wave equals a tangent wave. Take a look.
Thanks for watching this learnability video. Keep on learning.